Hey guys, so recently we held a giveaway in my Flynn Sisters Exclusives group. If you don't know what that is, that's my paid mentorship group. Uh, you can find a link to sign up down below in the description box, but I think we're currently sold out. We have open spots typically on the beginning of every month. Anyhow, we held a giveaway in that group for our members where I would pick a winner and create whatever custom order they wanted. So they could tell me whatever kind of cup they wanted me to make and I would make it in a video. So the winner of our giveaway chose these photos for inspiration. She also said she liked kind of a rustic sort of look like distressed with hints of gold and a little bit of leopard print if possible. And she also wanted me to include her beautiful tattoo. Look at that beautiful face. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna create for her. All right, you guys, so as usual, I'm starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup that I've spray painted with a flat white spray paint. I'm using resin rockers, UV resin, less than five milliliters here, and this is what we're going to use to apply our glitter. Yes, you could just use regular epoxy method if you wanted to, but this is gonna save us a bunch of time. And while one can argue that this is more expensive, if time is money, we're saving a lot of time here. So it's up to you. I don't think this is practical for every single tumbler, but if you're in a pinch, it's gonna save you a lot of time and effort. And it's non-toxic once it's fully cured. And then we're going to apply our regular two-part epoxy over this, which is FDA compliant. So no different than having the toxicity of your spray paint under your two-part epoxy. Uh, so I hope that dispels any kind of um, safety concerns that some of you might have. Also, we're using a 168-watt UV lamp, which is over three times the recommended wattage for this particular UV resin because we really wanna penetrate in and under that glitter to get a full cure. I've been able to get a full cure with this UV resin with multiple kinds of glitter, both metallic, uh, transparent, iridescent, holographic, whatever the case may be. Um, and you can tell that it's fully cured because it should be crunchy when you really push down in once everything's dry. You won't feel any stickiness, no tackiness, and your glitter won't move. All right, so enough of that chit chat. I'm gonna start with a chunky opal glitter. This is Falori from Peachy Olive Glitters. And I'm just sprinkling it in here and there into random spots, just to add a little depth and dimension to our glitter layer. After that, I'm gonna let it rip with Bifrost. This is also from Peachy Olive Glitters. This is like a, uh, kind of like a rainbow fire opal. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a little, chunkier than a regular fine cut. So you're gonna get high drama sparkle with this particular glitter, absolutely love it. Once we've got everything covered, we're going to aggressively tap off the excess and then I'm gonna put it under my UV lamp for five to six minutes. I've got some boxes lined up on either side of my cup turner to prop up my light. And I just, I let it roll through like 220 second cycles. I will have this nail lamp linked down below in the description box. Again, this is 168 watts and it's going to cure down to the core. <laughs> it's super strong. Once that's done drying, we're gonna brush off all the excess glitter and kind of aggressively tap it off. We wanna make sure we don't have any excess kind of rolling around there before we move into the inks. I am using just about every color of alcohol ink that I have. <laughs> I'm using a bunch of like Tim Holtz, Pinata. I've even got some inks from Woody's Goodies in there. But my girlfriend just came out with her own line of inks where you can pretty much get all of these same sort of colors all from one pack. So I will link that down below in the description box. Um, and I'm using these makeup applicators to apply the ink directly over the glitter. This is very similar to what you'd call like a rock candy 
ink method, only instead of using it to create like a geode or a rock candy look, we are going to be doing more of like a brush stroke sort of look because I'm trying to replicate the vibe that we got from the picture of the rug she sent. And this was the only kind of thing I could think of that would sort of replicate that look. So I'm using all different colors reds. I'm starting with the reds and the pinks first because they're my boldest colors. And in the photo, the reds and the burgundies and the oranges were more of an accent to the overall color scheme, which was sort of a mint kind of green teal vibe. You don't really have to use a different applicator for each of these colors because they're all pretty similar. But these applicators are super cheap, so you can throw them away uh, once they're done. I'm also going to use a natural sea sponge to cover larger areas. When I'm doing ink projects like this, I like to have a couple different modes of application to get different depths of color. So you're going to get more concentration with certain application methods than others. I hope that all makes sense. I'm really using every color of the rainbow here. So I have like three different colors of green sort of teal. I've got a burnt orange. I've got a cabernet. I've got wild plum. I've got yellow. I've got orange, indigo, purple. If at some point some of your sections seem to be a little harsh or you want to soften them at the edges, just grab one of the clean sections of your sponge, get some rubbing alcohol on there. I'm using 91% rubbing alcohol and just dab it in those sections to sort of soften the edges if you'd like. This will also help blend colors if you're wanting to blend colors. However, be really careful because we don't want things to get too muddled up. You want to keep those colors still kind of sectioned out. At some point, I started to get a little impatient and I just poured the ink directly onto the cup. However, I wouldn't have done that for the entire application because you need to be careful when you're just pouring them directly on there. They are going to spread and bleed and I didn't want that look throughout. So you definitely do get a different look depending on what sort of application method you're going with. So after about 20 minutes of messing with this, I was finally to a place that I was happy with it. I let it sit on my rack to dry overnight. You do not need to seal your inks. You just need to let them fully dry. All right. And now I applied two coats of epoxy directly over that. Uh, so we did one coat with Alumalite's Amazing Quick Coat. That's their fast drying formula. I let that dry for about four hours, came back, did a second coat right over the top of that. And that second coat dried for at least four hours before I was ready for sanding. Keep in mind, your epoxy dry times may vary based on the brand and type of formula. I'm using a 60 grit sanding block here to do my regular sanding routine. We're gonna remove a fine line of uh, glitter from around the top rim to expose that fine line of stainless steel. This is where the final coats of our epoxy will adhere to to create the final seal for our tumbler. So it's very important that we do this. I'm also going to kind of shave down any sharp bits and bumps, um, which is there's quite a bit because we've got some chunky monkey glitters on there, okay? So we wanna get this fairly smooth before we move on to the next step. When I was done sanding, I did clean it up with some paper towels and rubbing alcohol, and now we're ready for our paints. I'm using these beautiful chalk paints from Auntie Tay. I will link them down below. We're using navy, brie, and flamingo. I think this pink is called. They're super pretty. And I've got some chip brushes here. And we're going to do kind of a dry brush technique to brush in some accent brush strokes. I want to tone down the volume on these inks because they're very vibrant uh, and I want a more kind of muted abstract look. She did say in her request that she liked the look of like um, like the distressing and things like that. So 
that's what we're doing. If there's any parts that got messed up or you accidentally brushed in a spot that you didn't like, you can easily remove it with a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol. This will also help clean up your lines as well. If something didn't go on as cleanly as you hoped for, you can just rub it with the rubbing alcohol and paper towel. It's gonna take it right off. After I applied the blue and the cream color, I let those dry before I moved into the pink so that I don't accidentally mix colors and get things looking messy. This paint isn't going to take more than like 10 to 15 minutes to dry, especially with such thin coats here. But once it's dry, I'm gonna use Eileen's Tack It Over and Over glue with just a regular paintbrush here to paint some uh, pretty bold brush strokes, not too thick, but I don't want them to look brush strokey. <laughs> that makes sense. I want like solid strokes, not distressed looking strokes. I will dab off a little bit of excess glue on my paper towel. Uh, we don't need to dilute the glue either. We're just going to go right for it. My only goal here is to get the stripe pretty straight. I don't want any kind of curvature to it. I'm gonna let that glue dry for, I don't know, about five, 10 minutes until it's totally clear. You'll know that your glue is dry enough when you touch it, it should be tacky, but it shouldn't deposit onto your fingers. Once your glue is to that point, you could start laying over your foil. So we're using these beautiful gold transfer foils from Southern Bell Glitter, and we just rub them on with the felt side of our vinyl scraper. It's really important to really burnish it on there uh, for it to adhere. Then we'll lift up on our transfer and be left with this beautiful, shiny gold brush stroke. Absolutely love it. At this point, we also wanna take some acetone and a paper towel and remove any excess paint from that fine line of stainless steel that we exposed earlier with our sanding because remember, this is where our final coats of epoxy are going to adhere to to create the final seal for our tumbler. We create the final seal on the outer rim rather than the very top rim where it's more vulnerable. Once we're done with that, I'm ready to apply a thin coat of epoxy. I've got 20 milliliters of Illumilite's amazing quick coat. This is, again, the fast drying formula. So we just wanna do a thin coat on here before I move into my decals, okay? And this is gonna take about four hours to fully dry to where it's ready to accept decals and water slide. Here's what we should have so far. I've got some leopard print I've already cut with some pink Oracle 651 vinyl. I have this leftover from an old project. And she did mention she wanted a little bit of leopard print. So this is kind of <laughs> how I'm gonna work that in. Just as a further accent to those pink brush strokes, I think it's super cute. It almost looks like an extension of those brush strokes. So I'm just doing a little bit of those here and there. Next, I'm gonna apply this anchor that says refuse to sink. I found this image on Etsy. I will link it down below. And I've already printed it on clear water slide paper. I have just a regular inkjet printer. So I sealed this uh, three times with Rust-Oleum, two times clear gloss spray paint. And then I cut it out. And now I have it in some room temp water until I can feel it loosen from that backing paper. And then we'll be ready to apply it onto our tumbler. You'll notice that the surface of my tumbler is glossy. We don't wanna apply this to a sanded or foggy surface. Otherwise, you will see that fogginess through your decal and it'll look a little bit weird. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna use the excess moisture from that backing paper to moisten the surface of our cup before we slide that image right on to where we wanna place it. And then I'm going to smooth out any of the wrinkles or bubbles with a silicone brush. This is gonna dry for about 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll be ready for our final coats of epoxy. For my final coats, I'm using Illumilite's Amazing Clearcast Plus. It has enhanced UV protection in it, so it's gonna keep these colors bright and beautiful for a very long time. This particular cup took two final coats before it was totally done, and that's it. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I don't know if it was more of a tutorial than it was like a uh, 
kind of a journey along with me on how I would put together a custom order for somebody if I were still selling cups, like what my thought process would be uh, when putting that all together. And I love the final results. I hope she enjoys it. I think we hit the mark as far as the vibe we're trying to achieve here. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments. And if you liked my video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every Saturday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.